Welcome to another edition of Christian Answers. My name is Jeff Short. And today I want to do a follow-up on the couple episodes I did on the Jen Hatmaker controversy, where is this uh, popular Christian speaker, uh, mostly speaking at women's groups, large groups, uh, women of faith conferences, Jen Hatmaker had come out in favor of homosexual marriage and for the normalizing of homosexuality in the church. And so I offered a couple uh, episodes of criticism of that and went into that and explained that. And you can watch that uh, on past episodes of Christian Answers. But today I wanted to highlight a very rare case of a Christian woman actually coming out and criticizing another Christian woman, Jen Hatmaker, for her uh, apostasy, her her heresy on this uh, moral issue within the church. And that is a woman who has a broadcast called Theologians. Her name is Summer White, and she is one of those very rare individuals within the Christian community, the women's uh, community in the church, who will actually come out and criticize another woman for something this other woman said. Because usually the way it works is um, the women in the church, Christian women in general, are usually too polite, they're too worried about what will result if they criticize someone else in the church that isn't doing right. And so they keep silent. They let heresy and they let apostasy come into the church out of simply not saying anything or out of fear of criticism themselves or fear of being impolite. They just let evil and sin and error go Uh, and they just remain silent, and that's why you don't hear very many women. In fact, I have heard zero amount of women criticize Jen Hatmaker for essentially false teachings within Christianity. But today, we're going to listen to a broadcast by Summer White on her show, Theologian, or Sheologians, excuse me. She has a broadcast called Sheologians, And she's going to comment on the whole Jen Hatmaker controversy. And she's actually going to offer some criticism of Jen Hatmaker as a woman criticizing another woman within Christianity, which is very rare. But getting back to the point that I was making before, that very rarely will you find another Christian woman criticizing another Christian woman. And it's so frustrating to see heretical and false teachings come into the church like Jen Hatmaker and have have total silence within the women's Christian movement. There was a conference that was, I think it was even a couple decades old, called Women of Faith. Some of you have heard of Women of Faith. Uh, Some of you have, women have attended a Woman of Faith convention or conference or workshop or event. It's kind of like the women's answer to Promise Keepers. I think it started up shortly thereafter the beginning of Promise Keeper, and it was sort of the vision to get a lot of women together in these large arenas and encourage them in the Christian faith. And one of the speakers on the Women of Faith tour They would go around and speak to huge thousands and thousands of women at a time. One of the speakers on the platform was Jen Hatmaker. And she was a regular participant on stage at these large women events. These were largely evangelical Christian, Bible-believing Christian women events called Women of Faith. And they also had like Lucy Swindoll, Sheila Walsh, and some other popular authors and speakers among the women's movement in Christianity. And so 
Jen Hatmerger was a, a, a regular fixture on the platform at these Women of Faith uh, events. Okay, so last year when Jen Hatmaker comes out in this interview by the religious uh, news service, that she's all in favor of gay marriage and she's all in favor of homosexuality within the church and that we can't discriminate against gays and all this LGBT ideology coming from a supposed Christian spokeswoman, you would think that in response to that, you would have women of faith or some of the other participants in women of faith saying, no, we disavow that. Uh, we totally reject what Jen Hatmaker is saying. We call upon her to repent. We call upon her to confess her sins and come back to Christianity and come back in line with the teachings of the Bible. You would expect that to happen, at least uh, uh, some of these women in the women of faith, but no, nothing, silence, crickets. You could hear crickets. Nothing coming from the women of faith movement. No criticism. Uh, in fact, some of the interviews, there were some reporters that wanted to try to get some of these key leaders in, 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 in women of faith organization to say something in the form of criticism to Jen Hatmaker. And you know what the reply was for, for the most part, generally speaking? Oh, she's our friend. We don't want to say anything bad against her. So get the picture here. Here is a woman who is affiliated with women of faith. She goes off into heresy. She goes and turns apostate to the Christian faith by basically rejecting Christian morality as it's taught for 2,000 years, as it's taught in the Bible. And no one in her group of women of faith will say anything negative about her. No one will call upon her to repent. No one will publicly chastise her. No one will correct her. No one will rebuke her among the Christian women. And I have not heard one single Christian woman of any note, say anything negative about her. That is not the way Christianity is supposed to work. That is not how accountability in the church works. That's not how you express yourself in Christian love. If someone, the Bible says, goes astray, you are to go to that person and try to bring them back. And if they're speaking publicly uh, in error and false teaching, you are to publicly call them back. And you are to do what you can to do to correct that heretical apostate situation. Well, we're not seeing that happening, but we are finally seeing a Christian woman publicly and openly criticizing Jen Hatmaker. And I think we need to really listen to it. I think it takes some courage it should be the normal thing. It should be a natural thing to want to, <clears throat> it's iron sharpens iron, the principle in the Bible. One Christian helps another Christian. And sometimes that help comes in the form of rebuking, correcting, exhorting. That's what the Bible teaches us to do. And Summer White on her Sheologian broadcast does just that. And so we're going to take some time today to listen to Summer White's criticism of Jen Hatmaker, the criticism that should have taken place by some of the panel members and participants of the Women of Faith movement, but didn't take place. So now it's taking someone outside of the Women of Faith movement to actually offer the criticism that they should have been leveling against Jen Hatmaker. And so we're going to listen to Summer White's theologian broadcast in response to Jen Hatmaker's apostasy. And so let's roll that tape right now. Hi, I'm Summer, and I'm one half of Sheologians, the greatest women's podcast you've ever heard. I had a few requests to respond to a interview, an interview, an interview, that Jen Hatmaker just did with, I think it was Religion News, 
Net. Uh, I've only skimmed it, but I decided that it would be way too hard to respond to in a blog. So I thought we could just go through it together and it might be easier that way. Also, I had no idea that she's an HGTV star, so if somebody could fill me in on that, because I don't watch HGTV. Uh, so she starts talking about the Republican Party, uh, and Jonathan Merritt asked her, do you consider yourself a conservative or a liberal? And she said the most honest answer is probably that I'm a left-leaning moderate. Okay. Speaking of voting, you've been critical of Donald Trump, like literally everyone. What is it about him that bothers you as a Christian woman? Uh, she said she hardly knows where to start. She finds him absolutely, positively, thoroughly. That's a lot of adverbs. Unfit for the presidency. He doesn't understand politics. He doesn't understand policy. He does not understand the world. Uh, he does not understand how our government works. I don't understand how our government works. She doesn't believe that he has America's best interests at heart. He lacks the diplomacy that is required to be United States president. As a believer, I'm devastated at how successful he has been in pandering to our lowest, basest selves. She said the selves that are willing to be openly racist. She must be talking about the wall. I just found out the other day that Donald Trump is actually planning on building a wall. I thought it was like a metaphorical wall, but he means like a literal wall, which is the worst. Okay, so Donald Trump, he closes his arms and his heart. I don't even know what that means. I don't, have you seen Donald Trump's heart? I know he's a total fool, but this is, okay. Uh, she's scared because human hearts might not be able to live out in the open. I don't want my human heart living out in the open, so I also don't know what that means. Um, who do you plan to vote for? She said, my initial thought is vote for whoever is not Donald Trump and can win. Which would be Hillary? But what about Hillary? Would you be open to voting for her? Yes. Yes. Um, so she just said yes, period. No, just yes. She would vote for Hillary. So she was prompted by the interviewer who said, but Hillary has her share of problems too, right? <clears throat> she says, that to me is where the Christian family is struggling right now. Because Hillary has problems, that's not a struggle for me. I don't have to struggle, because I know that I'm not voting for Hillary. That's not an option. We're in a terrible predicament, which is a non-answer, by the way. Here's where it gets really interesting. Politically speaking, do you support gay marriage? Just as a reminder, an evangelical Christian is being asked. Politically speaking, do you support gay marriage? She said, from a civil rights and civil liberties side and from just a human being side, any two adults have the right to choose who they want to love. From a spiritual perspective, since gay marriage is legal in all 50 states, our communities have plenty of gay couples who, just like the rest of us, need marriage support and parenting help and Christian community. And they are either going to find those resources in the church or they are not. Okay, so here's where I would just like to point out that she uses the law to say that gay marriage, it's legal, so we have to support it. I would like to point out that abortion is legal and we don't have to support it and we actually have the obligation not to support it because if anything goes against scripture, then we have an obligation not to support it. So just because gay marriage is legal, that doesn't mean that we have to support it. That's insane, that's not an argument. It's not a coherent argument. And she's right that gay marriages aren't gonna find a lot of support in the church because they shouldn't find support in the church. What they should find is support in terms of encouragement to repent of their sin not encouragement to continue on in their sin. And she goes on to say, speaking of gay people, not only are these our neighbors and friends, but they are brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't know, this is where it's really important to know doctrine because it's true that we have brothers and sisters in Christ that struggle with same-sex attraction, but 
enveloping the entire gay community who is defined by their sin instead of putting off their sin, you can't call them brothers and sisters in Christ. This is just basic 101. If an LGBT friend of yours got married, would you attend the wedding? She says, I would attend that wedding with gladness and I would drink champagne. I'm sure it would be really fabulous champagne. <laughs> um, she says she wants the very best for her gay friends. Actually, you don't want the best for your gay friends because if you wanted the best for your gay friends, you would point them to Christ and you would not encourage them in their sin, which is, I understand, a really hard thing to do and I have friends that I love that identify as part of the LGBT community and part of loving them and doing what's best for them is not encouraging them in their sin. So it's not an easy answer. She's asked, how would you respond if one of your children were, were gay? I think we would parent that child exactly the same as the rest of them, which is to say we would always be on their side and in their corner and for them and with them. We want for all of our kids the same thing, faithful, committed marriage and a beautiful family that is committed to God and the church. Any family that starts off reviling God is not going to be committed to God. So that's just not even possible. This is my favorite question and this is the one that made me actually want to respond. She was asked, you mentioned faithfulness in God. Do you think an LGBT relationship can be holy? She says, I do. And my views here are tender. I don't know what that means. I don't know what a tender view is. Uh, this is a very nuanced conversation. It's not. And it's hard to nail down in one sitting. I'm gonna do it right now. I've seen too much pain and rejection at the intersection of the gay community and the church. So we're bringing feelings into the discussion if you didn't catch that. Every believer that witnesses that much overwhelming sorrow should be tender enough to do some hard work here. So I would just like to say to Jen that you're not doing the hard work at all. Um, the hard work, like I've already mentioned, is not to encourage people in their sin, and it's much more difficult to confront sin than it is to just hug someone, admit that they're going through something difficult, and let them go on with their lives. So I agree with her in that we need to do the hard work here. I agree with her in that the church hasn't dealt with homosexuality like it should or rightly but her solution is to encourage sin as opposed to actually do the loving thing for the souls of the people that we're talking about and at the end of the day it's the souls of the people that we're talking about that need the gospel they don't need a hug they don't need less feel they don't need like more feelings they need less feelings so Jen was asked if she thought that a homosexual marriage could be holy and her answer was yes, but there's a lot of nuance and it's hard to answer in one sitting. So I'm gonna help her out because there's not a whole lot of nuance and it's really not hard to answer in one sitting. God calls homosexuality an abomination. And so when we find people that we love and care for engaging in that sin, a sin that is spoken of pretty seriously and bluntly and clearly in scripture, the answer isn't to try to sweep that under the rug. God wasn't confused in the Old Testament. He wasn't confused in the New Testament. He knows what's best for us and he made us a certain way. Homosexuality seeks to twist that and the people that engage in that, they are hurting. And so I appreciate, I love that Jen cares about the souls of people and I do feel for them, but at the end of the day, the answer is no. A relationship that goes against God's created order and what he has said is best for us and what he's designed for us and what he's mercifully given us is not holy. It's not gonna benefit anyone and the souls that are involved in that are hurting. And so my plea to people like Jen who have a stage and who are teaching people is that they would instead preach the gospel to people that are hurting instead of encouraging them to engage in their sin. Ultimately, Jen's living out Romans 1, 32, when she talks about the people that give hearty approval to other people that are engaged in their sin. And that is who Jen is right now. And what the people in their sin need is the gospel. They need God to come and transform their lives and that is the most loving thing that you can give them. So anyway, 
uh, that's it. If you like anything that I said, go ahead and find me on iTunes. Uh, my podcast is called Sheologians, and the website is Sheologians.com, and sometimes I write some stuff, and you should read it. Thanks! Well, as you can see, that was quite an articulate, a very forceful, powerful presentation by Sheologian Summer White on her broadcast, her video presentation. And I have to say that she pretty much said what needed to be said. Now, in response, she was responding to another member of the Women of Faith, the singer Nicole Nordman, who is actually defending Jen Hatmaker. Now, this is another problem that you get. Not only do a lot of Christian women fail to rebuke a fellow Christian woman who is in error or in heresy or apostasy. Now, this isn't just a... Remember, this is not just a woman Christian, female Christian, who has gone off into error. This is a female Christian teacher, presenter, speaker, author, broadcaster. She's on television, HD television. She has a, a reality television show, her and her husband. And she's an author, a speaker, a well-known Christian personality that thousands and tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of women are, are familiar with Jen Hatmaker. And she has gone into false teaching. And so what we see in the Christian community is we don't see any of the women in our churches speaking out against her. We don't see any of the women saying, now, ladies, we have to really stay clear of Jen Hatmaker until she comes back to the faith because she's leading people astray. She's leading other women astray, so we need to protect them. We need to warn them, don't listen to Jen Hatmaker. She's in apostasy right now. She's in false teachings. She wants to tell gay people that everything's fine. They don't have to repent. They don't have to come to the Lord. She wants to tell so-called gay couples that they can get married and God blesses them. In fact, she wants to tell homosexuals that their so-called gay marriage can be holy in the eyes of God. Now, this is rank heresy and false teaching by any measure of standard. So you would think that the Christian women would be rebuking her and making it so difficult for her to speak and continue that she would give up that false teaching and apostasy and come back to Christianity. Well, they don't. At best, there's silence. There's just nothing said. We just heard a woman, Summer White, who refused to be silent. And she was actually replying to another woman who was defending Jen Hatmaker. Singer Nicole Nordman was actually defending Jen Hatmaker. And that's what you also get which is another tragedy in and of itself. Not only are most Christian women silent about hypocrisy and error and apostasy, they oftentimes will actually defend the false teacher if they like her, if they like her personality, if she's entertaining, if she's funny, if she's a popular speaker and author, they will defend her because of who she is instead of looking at what she's teaching. That is not love, people. That is not compassion. That is not friendship. If you see your friend doing something wrong, now, I'm not just saying a trivial thing you disagree with. I'm talking about something the Bible says is wrong, putting forth for false teachings and teaching errors and heresy and apostasy and leading others astray, you need to go to that person and say, I know this is risking a lot confronting you, but you need to repent and change and turn away from this 
false path that you're on because you're leading other women astray. That's what needs to happen. But what happens most of the time in the Christian community is either women are silent or they defend the false teacher. And that's the case here that we see with Nicole Nordman. Nicole Nordman is a popular singer. She has created many songs. Many millions of Christians have her music. She has spoken and sang at the Women of Faith events over the years. She knows Jen Hatmaker. And now she's defending Jen Hatmaker and saying, no, you, you, need to, you need to get on board, Summer White. She's trying to tell Summer White, no, you, you're wrong. You need to not criticize Jen Hatmaker. You need to show more love and compassion. You need to not be as judgmental. You need to um, be more empathetic and sympathetic to the people in the LGBT community and so on and so forth. In other words, Jen Hatmaker goes into error and apostasy and heresy and you see other women follow her in that heresy and apostasy and false teachings and actually defend her in that false teaching as well. And that is the problem. And that is the thing that we need to warn people about. And that is why we need to commend and we need to thank women like Summer White who have enough courage and have enough compassion and love in their heart that they're willing to risk relationships and criticism to go out on the line, step out on the line and say, I will rebuke false teachings among my fellow Christians, even though it may cause problems for me and I may face criticism and I may be rejected and I may be judged. I'm going to do it because it's so important. We need to do it and I'm willing to step out and do it. And so we need to thank Summer White in her Sheologian broadcast for doing so. And I just wanted to point that out for you today. Thank you, Summer White, for being brave and courageous. And I would encourage all the women who listen to this broadcast to be courageous and bold and be willing to confront a fellow sister in Christ who is an heir to show her her heir and bring her back on the right path. Well, I hope that's been an encouragement to you. We'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.